Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Steve Ford. Welcome to your English lesson. Here we have another English for 30 Days challenge. This is day five, and today we're going to learn about the many ways that you can use get. Are you ready? Let's go. Get, get, get. We can never have enough of get. And if you are getting a lot out of these videos, smash that like button. You can also subscribe to my channel, do the quiz after this lesson. So let's get straight to it. Get straight to it. And we're going to be talking about as soon as you wake up in the morning. And that's when we say get up. When you get up in the morning, you can say wake up means get up. It can also be physically when you stand up out of bed. So you can use get up in both those ways. Not everybody is a morning person. Not everybody is an early bird. No. And some people, they, when they get out of bed, will hop out of bed. They get out of bed easily. Other people are not like that. And many times, almost every day, it seems that when somebody's not an early bird, they can get up on the wrong side of the bed. So there's a good expression using get up, using get. To get up on the wrong side of the bed just means that as soon as you wake up, you're in a bad mood. Don't talk to me. So everybody needs something to get them going or get you going in the morning. This means to give you a boost. So my question is for you, what gets you going in the morning? What gives you energy? Is it letter A, B, C, D, or maybe something else? You let me know in your comments. For now, I think for me personally, what gets me going in the morning is coffee, coffee, coffee. Did I say coffee? Coffee gets me going in the morning or coffee gets you going in the morning. That sounds really good when we say it fast. Coffee gets you going in the morning. Coffee gets you going in the morning. So as we were just saying, some people, they wake up very quickly. Other people will take different intervals of time to wake up. So which one is you when, how long does it take for you to get going in the morning? A, 10 minutes, B, 30 minutes, C, one hour, F, never. <laughs> a benefit for some people right now is that they don't need to drive to work and they don't need to worry about getting stuck in traffic. One more get, meaning that you can't escape a traffic jam. Many people don't need to worry about being stuck or getting stuck in a traffic jam. However, everybody, this is the feedback I get from my students, needs to go to their online meetings on time. They need to get or arrive to their meetings on time. It's online, so people expect you to be very punctual on time. And I've heard that, especially if you're meeting with your boss, your superior, that maybe you can get into trouble if you're five, 10 minutes late. It's an online meeting. People are waiting for you. Tick tock, tick tock. Yes, and you can get into trouble. Of course, we're doing this all at home and we have our families, we have our spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends. So I have a question for you. What's worse, getting into trouble with your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend or getting into trouble with your boss? What's worse? You let me know in your comments. As you know, doing online meetings at home is a real challenge for a lot of people. You're talking to people online in a meeting. At the same time, maybe there's somebody asking you something. Maybe at the same time you're texting somebody very casually so that they don't notice. Maybe you're checking an email that you just got. You're doing this all at the same time. And I don't know if this has happened to you, but sometimes you can get your wires crossed. And what this means is that you are misunderstanding what the person is saying to you, or maybe they misunderstand. Why? Because you're concentrating on another conversation. You're not concentrating on the conversation of, with the person that you're directly in contact with. I don't know if this has happened to you. 
where, for example, you'll say, hi, John, and you're sending this hi, John message, not to John, but to Sally. Of course, after the end of a long working day, doesn't matter where it is, we're going to feel sleepy. Now, something that I've heard from many of my students is it's been difficult for them to get to sleep. And this means simply to fall asleep, to be able to go to sleep, to get to sleep. So here's my last question for you for today's lesson. What is the best way for you to get to sleep? A. Count sheep. B, watch TV, C, read a book, D, check your cell phone, or maybe you have some other option you would like to mention. Let me know in your comments what's the best way for you to get to sleep. And I mentioned this in another video that if I listen to soft music, it can help me get through the night, which means survive the night because the night was difficult because I couldn't sleep. Does that make sense? Hope it does. I hope that you enjoyed this first part of talking about get phrasal verbs. If you'd like to watch more lessons, you can go here. You can also subscribe to my channel. You can do the quiz here, and you can also follow me on my social media. I look forward to our next lesson. We'll get together again very soon, and bye for now.